we explored the birthplace of a nation, the Sisha'ata people of the Broken Group Islands near Yertula, BC. Their creation story begins at Sisha, now called Benson Island, where the first man and woman were created and tasked with caring for the islands and their people. After taking our boat almost 250 nautical miles to get here, we were so excited to explore Sisha. Are you ready for adventure? Subscribe now because we're getting ready for the Great Siberian Sushi Run. We've been in the Broken Island Group for two nights, and after spending those two nights on Effingham Island, it was time to pull up anchor and head towards a new island. This time, we wanted to go to Benson. One of the main reasons for going is we really wanted to see the tall wooden house standing post carved by a local Seishahat artist, Gordon Dick. Figure the best way to head to shore, because the tide is coming in, is to go by paddleboard. Ah. Really? Back. Gotta go pee before we go. Oh, I do that. Okay, hold on. Am I okay? Yeah, you're fine. You might get caught on the... Okay, no, you're good. Okay, dog, come here. Maggie, come here. Your turn. Okay, so it's on the tie first. This is a challenge. Well, it is a little wavy out here. I don't sit very well kneeled. What's that? I don't sit very well kneeled. My knees can't take this anymore, so you better be fast. Down to. Okay, let's go. Good to go. We're walking down the boat. <laughs> yeah, I got the dog. And we're rocking and rolling. Here, Maggie, you sit. Here we go. We're going to Benson Island. I'm hoping, hopefully, doing so dryly. Well, I'd say what the First Nations name is for it, but I really can't pronounce it. No, and I really don't want to stuff. bastardize the First we're Nations right. language. We have a hard enough time pronouncing things in our own language. That is true. Hi. What, us or the boat? the boat? No, we are so high. And if you're wondering why we're so far out of the water, we are just very low on fuel. Maggie, too close. That is kelp. <laughs> we are not very good at this. <laughs> this doesn't look good. I'm just going to sit here. This is seriously though the best way to get in and not bring the dinghy because of the tides. Because with the paddle bar we can just bring the thing right up on shore. Keep going, Blaine, you're doing great. I'm not doing well. This is the perfect landing spot here. Tight. Peggy's gonna make a jump for it. <laughs> uh oh, Blade. You got the board. Yeah, that worked out well. Boy, the boy, did Maggie ever have to go pee? So we understand that there's a path here, someplace. We just don't know where. So we've landed. There's Tangaro out there. Brought the paddleboard right up, which is good. And now we're gonna go explore, see what we can see or find. That might be a trail over here, Blaine. If you watch our past videos, this happens to us quite often, where we can't find the trail. So we kind of wander aimlessly through the forest until we stumble upon it. Luckily, we're usually on islands, so we can't get too lost. So you want to climb the beach? So I said we go around that side. Okay, well, let me just look here. And Blaine was right. So we headed back to the beach and followed it until we found the trail. deer tracks. And soon we discovered evidence that other animals, like deer, use the beach also. Back to climbing on driftwood. 
Just don't go on the one that moves. Just gotta get on the biggest one. Luckily, it didn't take us too long to find the trail. The moss is stunning. And soon we found the most important building on the island. Yep, the outhouse. Oh, great. Uh, don't eat shellfish. This area is often affected by paralytic shellfish poisoning. Red tide. No shellfish. Or Blaine no. will be paralyzed. I typically don't eat shellfish anyway. I know. So we're all good there. Huh. Well, I am. There's a wolf. There's cougar. Yeah, so maybe we'll keep Maggie on a leash. Let's go explore. Luckily, it didn't take us long to find the tall wooden house standing post that Google had told us about. There is also a signpost that told us the creation story of the Sishahata people. The creation story is that a girl named Sky Dawn was awakened by two figures, an old man and a shaman. The old man cut his side and the shaman gathered the blood, blowing on it to create life pulse. From this, a boy named Daydown was born. The boy and girl grew up, had many children and became the ancestors of their people. The chief in the sky created a safe, high island called Sischa for them to live on. The boy was given a war club with blood along the edge and was told to keep it on the beach to protect the tribe forever. And this is the island that we are standing on right now. The high island called Sischa or as we know it, Benson Island. It's so quiet. I had to put my hat on backwards because it kept hitting my head. That's the problem with peaked hats. I keep whacking my head because I can't see up. But it's so quiet here. I'm gonna go find some place to have lunch. I'm thinking this path is gonna take us to the other shore. At least that's the guess. They're so cool. Our BC rainforest is famous for these banana slugs. And you know what? They're actually the second largest slug in the world. I'm gonna go around the muck. Right here. Whoa. This island's beautiful. And it wasn't long until the trail opened up onto the wild west side of this beautiful island. The ground is soft. I don't think flip-flops are made for hiking. Ah, they're, doing they're very slippery. I'm wearing my, my Billabong hiking flip-flops. Mine are very slippery. I got my Alukai flip-flops. But heck, if we can use them for engine repower. Wow. Pretty easy to get down there. Okay, it is hard to explain how stunning this is and it's so nice to have some sunshine.
Look it up here, Blaine. What do you think? Pretty amazing. Love Absolutely it. beautiful. Checking out tide pools? Yeah. I was thinking. We're checking out tide pools. Cool. The green one here? Yeah. It's very green. Some dead crabs in it. Yeah, but look at these tide pools. The big one? Oh, look at all the sea anemones in here. I see them all. There's so many. I really have to watch where I step. I stepped on these poor anemones, one of them. I feel so bad and he squirted at me. Hopefully he lives. I think he'll be okay. You know, all 175 pounds of me stepping on him. Okay, let's go look. Easiest thing is to stay on the rocks and not in the crevasses. Oh yeah, look it. Let's try not to step on these things. That's anemone. Solid muscles. That's beautiful. Yeah. The tide went out much farther, it would be a lagoon, like a tile pool in here. That's really neat. I like that. Okay, this is like layered in mussels. I don't mind walking on mussels because well, there's a lot of them. Oh, there's some more anemones. Oh, look at this big anemone here. Maggie, don't cut your paws. This is just like a blanket. Here, the kelp. What causes sea foam? What causes sea foam? We're gonna have to Google what causes sea foam because there is so much sea foam here with the wave action. And of course, we Googled. Sea foam is from algae blooms. What happens is the algae blooms kind of break down and the decaying material washes ashore. Sea waves come in and it churns up that organic material causing foam. Now this foam is harmless to humans and often signals a very healthy, productive ocean ecosystem. hypnotizing. I got purple sea urchins and a starfish. Bring that backpack of lunch up here. Yeah. He thinks I pack lunch without fluids. Non-alcoholic fluids is what I brought. Cool. I like non-alcoholic fluids when I'm hiking. Let's sit out looking this way, but it's too sharp. We gotta sit someplace else, maybe. Oh, yeah. Right here? Sure. You wanna see our view for lunch? Pacific Coast. 
So we're having sandwiches and we've got ketchup chips, drinks, and we even brought doggy treats for me. Did you give her a doggy treat? I did. Gotta keep everybody happy. Oh. Did you drop it? Went back in the bag. She's gone. How's the sandwich? Fantastic. It's like my sandwiches, but more. Maggie's like, oh no, the treat. And no picnic lunch is complete without. If I could open it. Ketchup chips. <laughs> <laughs> I love my ketchup chips. And after an awesome lunch in an amazing place, it was time to head back to Tongaroa. This is wolves and cougar country. So, eh, right. the dog goes on the leash. You just gotta catch her. Here. As you can tell, she's extremely well trained. Didn't hit my head. I have a tendency to hit my head on things. I've already done it once today. And then you get that little <laughs> down their spine. It's like, ouch. And maybe an F-bomb got thrown around, which probably isn't very good on a sacred island. See, that's a that's a deer track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one too. So there's deer on the island, we just haven't seen them. Nope. And where there's deer, there's wolves. Because the wolves eat the deer. Looking for something. Wow. So Blaine was talking about anchoring in here when we were going to come on shore. I don't know, what do you think? Still would have been anchored in here? Uh, probably not. Pretty narrow in there. I think so too. Oh, look at that chunk of metal. It's kind of cool. Here she comes. Full steam? No, not quite full steam. Oh, yeah, that's pretty full steam. It's Maggie! <laughs> oh, she's pretty happy. Giving her a good run before we get back on the boat and start rolling all over the place because then she gets really, ah, she don't like it. She don't like it, Blaine. And it gets rolling, really, she gets cranky. So we're gonna see if we can walk this beach around to our paddleboard. Have my doubts. Do you? I do. Well, let's see if we can at least see Tanga. Let's go around. I think they had a bit of a cliff that came down over there, but it might be low enough tide. There. I see the roof of Tanga. I see our hammock poles. Yeah, it's kind of a, one of the first things you see. Get <laughs> the mast and the hammock poles. I know no other boat who has hammock poles. <laughs> but really, they're the best things about this boat. <laughs> oh, and it's aluminum. It can go anywhere. It looks like an adventure boat. Oh, can a flag. Yep. I think we can walk our way around. Like it. What am I seal. looking at? It's like a seal part of... Uh, seal bones? Oh wow, look at that. Holy cow.
check this out it's like a huge seal scapula and there's like oh, look at that isn't that cool oh there's his flipper yep flipper flipper look at that oh, wait the best part that's a big head it is very cool huh And you got all the rib bones everywhere. Yeah, it's very cool. I don't like these things. People should not buy these things to clean their teeth. I keep finding. What is this? It's a piece of plastic. I don't have the hands or the garbage bag to pick up all the styrofoam, but I definitely try to pick up little pieces of plastic that I find. Oh, he's pretty bashed up, that boat. Interesting. Definitely not floatable anymore. Oh, I lost my husband. Plane. Okay. Okay, let's go find a paddleboard. Another rope over here. Big chunk of rope. Hey, we're not going that far that way. <laughs> okay, we're on. Maggie's on. Blaine is on. on. Tangaroa onwards. You're almost there, Blaine. Almost there. Keep going. Doing great. <laughs> I feel like a princess, you know, on those Venice boat tours. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Woo! I got sideways. Oh shish, Blaine. We got weight coming. Oh Blaine. Oh Blaine. Hang on, Maggie. Really? Uh -huh. Woohoo! Really? Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> I just got a wet bum! Yep. Oh, that was a really cold wet bum. Oh. <sighs> Who was that fisherman that just gave us the week? I don't see him. Okay. Now I have to change shorts. I'm constantly getting wet clothes. I hate having wet pants. It's like yuck. Yeah, that's no fun. Wet pants, wet underwear. Gotta change before we go exploring in the dinghy. So we saw a really cool picture online of an abandoned fireplace chimney and we are off to find it. Is that the key? I'm not gonna throw it. That would be stupid. Ill advised. Do not throw dinghy keys. So we were just at Benson Island, and now we're gonna go to Clark Island. But I think we're gonna go right around it. I'm going through that gap lane. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's do it. Do it. You come sit with me. We can sit together. Because we're just meandering.
those. Those are kelp. Maggie, kelp. Maggie has a tendency to bark at every seal she sees, thinking that she's protecting us. Let's go look. Going in. When we rounded the corner, we saw a ton of kayaks. What we didn't realize was that Clark Island was one of the main stops on the kayak route through the Broken Island Group. We can get right through. They're going to be like, they just went through seaweed. They're going to be like, oh, those motorboats are so loud with their engines. Pretty quiet. I say we go to shore somewhere and see if we can find this fireplace. Maybe they'll know. Here we just came through, that's so cool. Okay, we're going to shore. Just have to give you a little bit of foreshadowing on what happens at the end of this video. Maggie, you're gonna get wet. <laughs> She's like, screw that. Just wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, this water is warm, man. Okay, this stuff allegedly grows like a foot a day. Bull kelp. It's just awesome. Actually, I don't know if this is bull kelp. I don't think so. This isn't bull kelp. I'm not sure what this is. Okay, Wayne's putting the anchor out. I'll get the key. But to say, this beach sand is so soft. It's like, huh, amazing. Look at they put shells all on the path. Watch out, Maggie. Isn't it? I didn't even notice. You didn't notice the shells? It's so pretty. Look at it. Okay, look at the look at the ferns on the roof of the outhouse. Okay, look at that fireplace. That's cool. You are here. Oh, they're talking about this island. Oh, yeah. I love that they're picking up all the garbage. And then it was time to check out the fireplace. Can I get around here? Thanks. Okay, that's cool. That's cool, eh? So I'll have to do some searching on what this fireplace is and where it's from. Somebody said on the beach said it may be from a burnt down private residence. No clue, but it is this absolutely beautiful stonework. We definitely have to do some searching. So this island's really cool because it is a kayaker's paradise. Um, there's campsites everywhere. There's a lot of kayakers here. Um, it's kind of weird coming from the other island where there is no one there. No. Um, they've got washrooms. They've got... Anyways, it's just a stop along the kayak path through the Broken Group. But let's go do a little bit more exploring. What do you think? Do it. Go this way. Away from the people. Can people be over there? Let's see the back of this fireplace. 
It's kind of funny with the fireplace because I don't see any like remnants of a house. Mm -hmm. Just the stone. Well, look at this path here, Blaine. Want to walk it? Sure. I'm just following the shells. It's kind of funny here with the paths. We've either, either following shells or buoys. There's some kind of usually mark on the path. Or is this someone's campsite here? Where do you want to go? This way. Let's see what we can find. There's remnants of bricks. So there's got to be more habitation around here. Maybe. Or someone brought those bricks in from somewhere. After searching the internet, the only thing I could find out about this fireplace is that it was possibly from an old hotel that was on Clark Island. If you know more about this fireplace, please put it in the comments because we would love to know the history of it. Check out this log, Blaine. Oh, look at this one. That was so much fun. Blaine is just checking on Tangro on the anchor alarm. What does yeah. it look like? Uh, we're swinging around the other way now. We're still okay? Uh, we're well, not dragging. We're in the circle, but... Um... Okay, it's back to the dinghy. We're going to head back to Tangaroa and then pull anchor and head for Euclid because I think we have a pub calling our name tonight. What do you think? I think. I could use some hot wings. Yeah, I don't, I don't much care for swinging that way. Hey, look, we're like... <laughs> we're floating. Tide's coming up. Oh, yeah. Log is coming up. So Blaine and I were looking at those kayakers. I think we prefer to go by boats. We're a little bit... I don't know. On the boats, we have hot showers, we have our clothes. And paddling takes a lot out of ya. We're not very really good at, at camping. No, we're definitely not very good at sleeping in tents. Not at all. So, okay. Let's go keep our gunk holing alive here. Let's go this way. Lane's getting frustrated, but he's also worried about the boat. So it's like, let's get back as soon as we can. Like, well, our dinghy doesn't go any faster. I can pop through over there. Right here. Go. I might get some seaweed through here. Remember that foreshadowing of seaweed wrapped around the propeller? <laughs> Wait for it. I'm just dodging the stuff on the surface. Uh oh. I just saw it. Bring it up. Forget it. Just go now. I just saw it. Okay. We hit bottom. We're stuck in seaweed. Lane's grumpy. Life is not good right now. So we are bogged down in seaweed. <laughs> We are stuck, Blaine. We also have the engine halfway up. It's got a hold of us. Look at the CV for chopping up. We're chopping it up, Blaine. We're blending seaweed. the propeller. Are we? Oh wow. 
Okay, well that was an adventure. We almost got held down by the seaweed monster blade. Okay, we're looking for Tangaroa to make sure she's safe. We've had a wind shift since we've been out and about and we're not happy. She would have swung towards her stern towards the rocks. So hopefully she's okay. We're just waiting to see if she's okay. Uh -huh. I don't see her yet. I thought we were just around this corner. There she is. She looks okay. Yeah. Whew. It's always worrisome when you have no eyes on the boat and you're looking at the anchor alarm and she's just on the edge of that anchor circle. A bit nerve wracking. Lane was not, Lane was not happy at all. There's a reason to have an anchor alarm when the alarm goes off. You get home. Nice. Back to the boat. When you're on board, it's a different story, but monitor. But when you're on the other side of the island where you can't even see the boat, it's a problem. It's a little bit more not fun. And when their dinghy is not it's got a really strong motor, so this is about the speed we go. You can't get anywhere fast. No. Okay, so this is the plan. We get back to the boat, we start the engines. I'll get the dinghy ready, then I'll start lifting the anchor. At least with the engine started, we'll feel much better. I'm okay just seeing the boat. She's fine. I can't see it, that's a problem. As you can see, the wind had picked up and the current had changed, which was actually pushing our stern right towards the rocks. Hey, Blaine's rushing to start the engines because he's not happy with that. Pardon? I'm not crazy rushing. But not happy. Okay. It's a problem. You have so much fun kind of gun holding and something kind of goes a little bit awry at the end and kind of puts a damper on the whole thing. It's just the wind came around sooner than I expected. And we got attacked by a seaweed monster. Uh, yeah. Kelp was ridiculous. So we've just gone through the opening between the two islands that we just explored and now we are heading to Euclid to maybe do a bit of grocery shopping, and get some new prawn line, and, and find a pup. <laughs> Very happy. I asked the chefs for blue moon wings, which they actually don't have the menu here, which is when they mix hot sauce and blue cheese, and then they dip the wings in it. It is so yummy. Look. And Blaine had a, what are you eating? Lane and I hope that you really enjoyed exploring Sisha Island with us. We absolutely loved Benson Island and we can't wait to show you more about the Broken Island Group. So hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notify button because there's a lot more videos about this beautiful place to come.